Hey everybody, I'm Corey Mandel and this is the third free training video. If you haven't watched the first two, the first one is on improving your writing style. The second is the big why and they are both on my YouTube channel. Uh, before we get into this one, uh, real quick, I've done a whole bunch of webinars over the past several years on topics that can help writers launch their careers or help writers who have careers take their careers to the next level, topics like pitching, um, how to develop and create a high concept that can stand out in the current marketplace, uh, strategies for starting your script in a way that can truly grab a reader, uh, an industry reader, and make them want to keep reading, strategies for how to structure the middle of your scripts. And I've been getting a lot of emails from folks who are sheltering at home uh, asking if they could purchase uh, recordings of those webinars. So I'm going to put a bunch of those webinars up on a site. I um, hope to have that done pretty soon. So I invite you to go to coreymandel.net if you haven't already done so. Sign up for uh, my email list because um, I'm going to give everyone on the email list a discount code that can be used for any of the uh, webinar recordings. And also, if you're on the list, you'll get notified uh, when all the content's up, what the content is, and where you can find it. All right. so. Let's dig into today's training, which is the big what. And this should not take you very much time at all. Um, all you want to do is just get into a place where you can be in a real centered, calm, open-hearted place. And I'm going to ask you a question, and I just want you to answer the question. And so you want to get in a place where you can just honestly answer the following question. If I could absolutely guarantee you success writing anything that you wanted, what would you be writing and why? If I could absolutely guarantee you success writing anything that you wanted, what would you be writing and why? And I don't want you to limit yourself. Remember, in this exercise, I am guaranteeing you success. So dream big and be completely honest with yourself and don't put any self imposed limitations. So, for instance, if you could be successful writing anything in the world and your honest answer is you'd love to write an Academy Award winning movie and then a voice says, yeah, but I don't know if I'm necessarily good enough right now to write an Academy Award winning movie, but you know, I think I might be able to have success writing this other kind of thing. No, no, your answer is what you most would wanna do is be writing Academy Award winning movies. If what you most wanna be doing is writing a big smash popular comedy on Netflix or NBC or wherever. You want to just write a super popular successful comedy, but you're not sure if you're funny enough uh, to pull that off. doesn't matter. In this exercise, you're following your heart and you're picking the one thing, the one type of writing or another way of thinking about it. If I can guarantee you success having a specific type of writing career, what career would you pick and why? And again, it's not, well, what do I think of, of the careers that I think I could credibly have or the kinds of scripts that I think I might be able to successfully pull off, which one would I most want to write? No, that's not the question. The question is, I am guaranteeing you success. What are you going to be writing if you could be writing anything? And I want you to be specific, as specific as possible. So if you want to write an Academy Award winning movie, what kind of Academy Award winning movie? If you want to be writing a big popular comedy on Netflix or NBC or wherever, what kind of comedy? Is it a dark comedy, a character based, exploring the interconnections of a dysfunctional family type comedy? Then write that down. Be as specific as possible. And I know that some of you will have multiple answers. You know, well, if I was guaranteed success, I'd love to write this kind of project. I'd love to write this kind of project. I'd love to write this kind of project. And hopefully over the course of your life, you will be successful at all of those projects. But this exercise focuses you on the one kind of writing or the one kind of career that you most want and why. And think about lifestyle. Think about what kind of life you want. 
I was a feature film writer for a decade. I'd go in, take some meetings, get hired for a project. I'd have eight weeks, 10 weeks to write that script. And during those eight or 10 weeks, for the most part, I was accountable to nobody. I just had to get the script in on time. So I had complete control over my schedule. I could be writing when I wanted and where I wanted. I didn't have to be in LA if I didn't want to. Some people thrive in that environment. They love the freedom. They love to be able to set their own schedule. It is bliss. For some people, and I was one of these people, it wasn't quite so blissful. Um, I felt lonely. I, I didn't like being all by myself facing the blank page. Uh, it, if, I, if I could do it all over again, I would have pursued a career in TV. And there are people who love working in TV. They love the structure. They love working in a room. They love working with other people. They love the collaboration. They also love that you, know, you write something and then it's not usually all that long and you can see what you wrote on the screen, the, the TV screen. They love the hiatus. And there are other people that hate working in a room. They, it could be long hours. You know, um, There could be a lot of politics involved. You probably don't always like everyone that you have to work with. And so what kind of life do you want? You know, I uh, recently did a pitch consult for a writer. Um, and he, like five years ago, broke in the business, got staffed on a network comedy. And after one year of that, he's like, I don't want to work in a room. But he loves TV. So the career that he most wanted and the career that he's created for himself is he writes a spec or two, a spec pilot or two a year and develops three absolutely killer pitches. And he goes out and so far for the last five years, he's always sold two or more of either his scripts or his pitches. And so he's creating original content and selling it. And that's how, that's his career. And he loves that lifestyle. And one of his projects almost got made it was actually shot as a pilot, but it wasn't ultimately picked up. But he's going to keep doing this until he gets, you know, something that he wrote on the air. But in the interim, he's making really good money. And he's working like four months out of the year and he has eight months to do whatever he wants. And that's the career and the lifestyle that he wanted. So, you know, I know all of you are at different points in your life journey. Um, but think about the life you have or think about the life you would most want. Think about the writing, the types of writing that you would most love to do if you could be successful and be very specific and the career that you most want. And the reason that I'm suggesting you do this and doesn't have to take a lot of time and it, it should be fun, it should be an enjoyable exercise, is I meet a lot of writers and work with a lot of writers who had the same or similar experience that I did. You know, when I was uh, finishing up film school, I, I want to be a writer, but I was really insecure about if I thought I had the ability to be a writer at a professional level. And so I gave myself one year. I said, I have one year to get an agent and sell a script or I'm going to law school. And I don't recommend you do this. I think it's a, it was a terrible idea. Um, if I could go back in time, I would have grabbed myself and shook in myself and said, what are you doing? Um, if you're serious about a writing career, you need to give yourself a proper amount of time to, to really give it a shot. And I don't think one year is a proper amount of time, but that's what I did. I said, I have one year to get an agent, sell a script. 13 months later, so a little longer than a year, had an agent, almost sold a script, but sold the pitch to Ridley Scott, made the front page of Variety. So I was, I'm going to count this as a success. It was 13 months, didn't actually sell the script, but sold the pitch. I'm going to count that as a success. Did the project for Ridley Scott. Was really lucky to have other studios want to hire me. Kept booking feature projects. And after like two or three of them, I realized I don't really like writing these kinds of scripts, the kinds of scripts that I kept uh, getting hired to write. And I realized I think I'd be much happier writing an entirely different kind of script, different, you know, different career trajectory. And I was naive or dumb enough to call my agent <laughs> and say, hey, you keep putting me up for these kinds of projects and I keep booking these projects. 
don't know if I really want to keep writing this kind of stuff. I think I'd really like writing something completely different. I think I'd really like writing something completely different. Can you put me up for those projects? And my agent, she took a while to answer. I'm sure she was filtering through everything she wanted to say, but she was very, she, she was very calm. And she said, uh, no, I can't put you up for those kinds of projects because the spec scripts that you wrote, these are the kind of scripts that launch the career you're on. You know, people read your spec scripts. They're like, oh, this is the kind of writer you're on. And this is the kind of writer that you are. And hopefully they, they think, wow, you're really exceptional as this kind of a writer. So they start thinking of you for those kinds of projects. So you wrote spec scripts that put you on the trajectory or put you on the career path that you're currently on. Now, if you didn't want that career path and you wanted a completely different career path, you want to be writing comedies, why didn't you write spec scripts that were comedies? You know, why didn't you write the scripts that would have launched the career that you wanted? It was a great question. And of course, the answer is because no one told me to do the exercise that I'm suggesting that you do. And here's the thing. When we walk, we tend to move in the direction that we're looking. And in life, we tend to move in the direction of our intent. So my intent was to get an agent and to launch a career within a year. That was my intent. I never asked myself what kind of career I wanted. I never asked myself what kind of life do I want and what kind of life work balance do I want. If I had asked myself those questions and explored it, I would have realized I believe that I was best suited for this kind of a career path and then I could have written the spec scripts that would have launched that career path. Would I have been able to pull it off? I don't know. And I don't know because I never tried. Now, as many of you know, if you have a certain career trajectory, if you are on a certain career path, it doesn't mean you can't change that path, but it takes a long time and it's not easy. And I work with so many writers who have careers, but they're not happy and fulfilled in their careers because. They just tried to launch a career as quickly as they could. They didn't take the time to ask themselves, what kind of career do I most want? And they didn't put the work in to get the career that they most want, what they most wanted. And here's the thing. As many of you know, for most people, it's not that easy to launch a career for most people. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of heartache. There's rejection. People have to realize that maybe their current skill sets don't quite line up with what they're trying to accomplish. They need to find a way to turn weaknesses into strengths. They need to acquire new tools. And then they eventually need to get to the point where they can write the kinds of scripts that can truly launch their career. Still facing rejection. Uh, they have to be persistent and gritty and strategic. Getting a little bit of luck can help, maybe more than a little bit of luck. So. For most people, it takes some time and effort to launch a career. And please hear me when I say this. For most people, it doesn't actually take that, it's actually not that much harder to launch the career that you most want than to launch any career. So plan A is figure out the career you most want and then figure out how to get that career and commit to that path. Now down the road, hopefully, you will launch the career that you most want, and it will be the career that you most want. But, but let's just say down the road, it's not happening. You, you're, you're doing everything you can to launch the career you most want, and it's not happening. Well, you could then figure out what's standing in your way. Maybe you need to up your game as a writer a little bit more. Maybe you just need to be a little more strategic in how you go about launching your career. Or you always have the option down the road of saying, maybe I'll pivot to plan B. And I've worked with writers who've done this. Writers who are like, look, this is the career I most wanted. And I went for it. And I put everything, heart, soul, and mind into it. It just hasn't happened. And I'm getting to the point where I need to get some money out of this. I need to be able to make some form of a living as a writer, let me pivot and, you know, let me look at where my strengths are. And instead of going for the career I most want, which is what I've been doing, maybe now I'll pivot to plan B 
and I'll try to figure out what kind of career I'm most likely to be able to get. Maybe it's not the career I most want. Maybe it's not the career I most want, but let me pivot to the career that I think I can get. That, that's a, obviously a very viable option down the road, but for too many writers, plan B is their plan A, which is they, they just go for a career, that's their intent, they don't go for the career they most want. You know, life's short. And I, I wish that someone had given me this exercise when I was starting out. And when you finish doing this exercise, I know that some of you are gonna have questions in terms of, okay, now I know the career I most want, how the heck do I get it? How do I actually get this career? And there's some real tangible questions like, what kind of scripts do I need to be writing? How do I know if these scripts are truly good enough? And if they are truly good enough, how the heck do I get the right people to read these scripts? You know, how do I get an agent or a manager or a producer or an executive? How do I get the right people to pay attention to my scripts? And then for some of you who are further down the road, there's a whole new set of questions which can involve, I, I have representation, I'm getting the right people to read my scripts, and I'm going on meetings, but no one's buying anything. No one's buying my pitches. No one's buying my scripts. They keep encouraging me. They keep wanting to see my next script or hear my next pitch, but no one's buying anything. I meet with showrunners, but no one's staffing me. I meet with executives at the studios for assignments. I never seem to book an assignment. How do I go from meetings to a career? So like many of you, I'm sheltering in place and will be doing so for the next three or four weeks, and then we'll see what happens then. So as I have time uh, over the next few weeks, I plan on um, recording some content that can answer some of these questions or at least give some guidance. You know, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but A, I was fortunate enough to launch and sustain a career for a decade as a feature film writer, and I learned a lot of lessons and had a lot of people give me some really important advice along the way that I can share with you. But also I've now for over a decade been working with writers uh, in the workshops or one-on-one, -on -one, and I've seen the writers who go on to great success, I've seen the writers who go on to some success, and I've seen the writers who don't go on to any success. And the writers who go on to have the most success, they tend to do certain things that a lot of other writers don't. And the writers who don't end up with success, they tend to make a lot of the same mistakes that other writers avoid making. So as I have time over the next couple of weeks, I uh, will uh, endeavor to try to give you some pointers and some guidance and maybe some answers or some help with some of these practical questions. But before we do that, I really, really encourage you to take some time to figure out what kind of life you most want in terms of writing and your writing life, you know, your work life balance and what kind of career you most want and why. And then um, you can you know, keep an eye on my YouTube uh, channel as I add videos that can answer some of the practical questions of, okay, now I know the career that I want, how the heck do I get there? Um, and also, once again, you can also, uh, if you haven't already done it, subscribe to the email list on coreymandel.net to be notified of when more free content is coming. All right, so we'll get to the, answers to some of the practical questions of how do I get this career, but now figure out the career you most want. All right, everybody, over and out.